What is going on guys? I am Jehovah. Welcome to some motherfucking Overwatch gameplay. Now, I just want to kind of give my backstory on Overwatch. I the Overwatch was like one of those games that there was so many instances for people to play it before the game was released. There was alphas and betas and this and that and it was at all the conferences, you know, as far as like uh, PAX and all that stuff as far as I understand. It, there was just lots and lots of opportunity to play it, and I I never did. I never played it. I never. I actually got beta codes at one of the time, uh, one of the uh, periods of time that you could do that, and I don't remember what was going on, but I was too busy, anyways. Um, and I tried not to get too hyped up about it. I didn't look much into it. Whatever. Uh, it was just one of those things. In fact, I went out. A lot of people associate Lawbreakers, Cliffy B's new game, as a as a close competitor, I guess, to. Um, Overwatch, and I actually got to play Lawbreakers before I played Overwatch. I went out to the studio and got to try it out, and uh, really loved it. And by the way, having played both, uh, there's similarities, but they're also very different and very enjoyable in their own ways. And uh, that's one of the things I also wanted to touch out, touch on here, real quick before I ramble on too much. This is a very, very decent gameplay. I went. Uh, I'm playing uh, Hanzo here, as you can tell, with the bow and arrow. Really enjoyed playing some Hanzo, got a lot better with him um, after spending some time and, and really kind of figuring out how to play him. And I didn't even know that you could climb stuff like I just did for the longest time until I saw like a highlight on YouTube and I was like, oh, I've been doing things wrong. But anyways, this is a 16-0 gameplay, which I thought was pretty cool. It's the first time I've ever gone flawless in, in, in uh, Overwatch and it's kind of hard to do. You have to be a pretty careful player to do that. Anyways, um, so yeah, as I was saying about Lawbreakers and Overwatch having their differences and both being enjoyable games, one of the things I hear the most about Overwatch is everybody automatically, um, well not not everybody, but a lot of people are dismissing it and just saying, oh it's a Team Fortress 2 ripoff, reboot, whatever you want to call it, and not interested. Um, I am a huge fan of Team Fortress 2 and it, it might be a little bit of a different... Uh, in a different way than you would expect. Whenever the orange box came out on Xbox 360, I don't know what year it was, uh, but it was a long ass time ago, the orange box came out. And the games included, I believe, were Half-Life, Half-Life 2, and um, Team Fortress 2, and Portal, right? So I picked up the orange box uh, because I was a budget gamer. I believe at the time it was a $20 game for all four of those. I was like, fuck yeah, it's a no brainer, right? Me and my friends picked it up and Team Fortress 2 ended up being one of our favorite things to play. We played the shit out of it on Xbox Live. We even landed a little bit and I had a hell of a lot of fun playing Team Fortress 2. I actually have some videos like on my channel, either on my channel or on my friend's old channel of uh, us doing some stuff on Team Fortress 2. But anyways, that that's Team Fortress 2 was amazing. I loved it. Um, having played a lot of that, I don't play it on PC now. There's a there's still a very large community playing. Uh, I don't play it now on PC because every time I try it, I get absolutely wrecked on PC. The people that are still playing it are very good. Um, but I can see where people are saying, you know, it's a class-based shooter. The similarity, similarities being that there's, you know, there's a there's a character that has a turret, and you know, I feel like that's the thing that people see, is, you know, the the little dwarf or whatever in Overwatch banging on his turret. Look at, I was beating the shit out of that. What was that a Winston? Like, dude, that guy got so wrecked. I am the best ever. Anyways, um, I think people think of the the turret character and relate that to Team Fortress 2 the most. Um, but I don't know. I would almost relate this game more to an old school game that I also played a lot of back in the day with my friends on Xbox Live, Shadowrun. That was another um, character-based um, shooter that I played, and it was a lot of fun. There was an elf character, I believe, that you could have like a glider and you could snipe with that character, and it was a lot of fun. There was a giant like dog troll type character, I, I believe, and he, I think he was the one with like a tree of life. You could spawn a tree of life and everybody could stand around it and regen health and uh, various stuff like that. One of the one of the characters had uh, a bit of a teleport um, feature somewhat like Tracer in this one. Uh, so I would almost relate this more to Shadowrun, but I don't see those things as negative things. I guess the people that I see bringing that up, it's almost like a negative thing. Uh, but this game being much like Team Fortress 2 and Shadowrun uh, is a good thing to me. I really enjoyed both of those. I really enjoy Overwatch. And uh, there's so much variety. There's so much, like, if you want to play one way, like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. If there's, 
there's so many different play styles in Overwatch that like I feel like there's something for everyone. And there's there's 21 heroes, so there's so many different ways. And everybody has like you know a primary and an alt and and their uh, ultimate status, and it's just really really cool. And the different game types are cool and everything. Now I'm I'm excited for competitive to come around. Uh, I think that'll be a lot of fun. But anyways, at this point, I think we have everybody in the crew. Like everybody bought a copy of Overwatch, which I didn't expect at all. I picked it up because I knew I would enjoy it, and then uh, you know I got. Joel and G18 to play with me. They really enjoyed it. And then slowly but surely, everybody in the crew started picking it up. And I think everybody but Speedy has it now. And we've been having some nights where we get on and just thoroughly enjoy ourselves. You guys really enjoyed that first episode of Play of the Game highlights, basically. It pretty much brought back shitty kill cams, if you guys know. L look at this shit. So I, I started like reminding myself that I needed to melee more. And I, I like, that Reaper just got wrecked. Come on, completely destroyed. If you can't kill me with Reaper and I'm Hanzo just beating the shit out of you, you're fucking trash. Um, but anyways, I don't know. Yeah, it's just a lot of fun. I wanted to make a commentary kind of talking about it, my thoughts of it, and uh, you know what I think of it so far. So I think there's a lot of, a lot of ways to improve. I think a lot of things are going to get nerfed. Uh, there's some stuff right now that's pretty OP. Like if you're McCree and you're just... And I got an achievement on this. I don't know if that was from going Blackjack. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that means. Uh, if somebody knows what blackjack is, the achievement, let me know. Um, but yeah, I feel like there's a little bit for everybody, and uh, it's just a lot of fun. I forgot what I was saying two seconds ago. Um, but yeah, so this is Overwatch, and if you wanted to see like a full gameplay for me, this is it. That Reaper had a, a very nice special. Oh, uh, patches. I think a lot of things are going to get patched, like McCree using his stun and then fan the hammer. Uh, it's pretty OP, but at the same time, like, I think they understand that if they take some of the OP stuff away, then, you know, you can take some of the satisfaction away. Like, I feel like they're going to do a good job just from seeing the little bit I've seen the devs say uh, about the game and about the patches and everything. Because every character is rewarding in its own in its own way, in its own play style. And there's counters to everything, and it just feels really good. I don't know. I'm all about it. I really like it. Uh, how long will it keep my interest? I don't know. We'll just see. But right now I'm really loving enjoying some McCree, uh, some Hanzo, some Widowmaker, and uh, just all around having a good time. If I'm really getting my shit pushed in, I'll switch over to the Soldier 76. I think that's what it's called. Soldier 70. I always forget the number. Soldier. I'll switch over to Soldier just because it's the easiest to just go ham and, uh, you know, pick your KD back up if you're just really sucking the dick. Uh, so this is another gameplay starting here. I don't remember what my KD is at the end of it. I don't go flawless, but I think it's still a decent gameplay. So anyways, um, there's some other stuff I want to talk about, I guess, uh, after I've kind of, you know, talked about Overwatch a little bit. There's some stuff coming up. E3 is about two weeks away, something like that. And unfortunately, I will not be there. I had planned on being there all year, pretty much. Last year, it didn't go to E3 as, as also. We were, we were going to go to E3. Um, but some asshole named Nobody Epic decided to get married in the same week. Just kidding. Love you, Joel. We all went out to Michigan to Nobody Epic's wedding and had a lot of fun. Look at that first blood. Mmm, right out the dough. That feels good. Uh, but we had a lot of fun out there. And this is my new hobby is whenever the stupid, what is it, Farah, I think is the name of that, that hero. When Farah starts, uh, flying around shooting her fucking annoying rocket spam, I try to pick her off with arrows. Anyways, uh, yeah, we went out to the wedding, and our plan was, oh, well, we'll just fly right after the wedding out to L.A. for E3, right? And we ended up not doing that. We decided it was too much to worry about, especially for Joel. Uh, you know, like, that's the last thing you want to worry about, like, the day after your wedding. So we ended up not going to that. This year, uh, coincidentally enough, uh, we had a friend's, another friend's wedding the, a few days before E3. So I'm actually going with my wife and family to another friend's wedding and we will not i won't be attending e3 mostly because of that also because uh travel arrangements and everything were kind of complicated this year but it sucks i i'm like kind of i'm really kind of bummed about it because i had never been invited to the xbox conference like you know where they announce all the things coming from from xbox and the keynote or whatever they call it i got invited to the xbox conference which was really cool uh from my xbox contact and then uh a few days after that I got a random email to my business email, and it was like, hey, uh, this is so-and-so from Sony, and we've been watching your Doom Let's Play at the office, and we're really enjoying it. We'd love for you to come out to the Sony press conference at E3, and afterwards we can you know, kind of give you a behind-the-scenes of everything coming uh, to PlayStation in 2016. 
and I was like, fuck. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I even had somebody from Twitter reach out and, you know, was like, hey, uh, you know, uh, we want to we want to connect out here at Twitter, and I just had a whole bunch of people reach out, and I was going to do stuff with lawbreakers out there. You know, I'm assuming I probably would have been able to get a look at the new Call of Duty. As worried about that as I am, it would still be nice to see you know maybe some multiplayer gameplay and be able to get a better opinion on whether or not it's going to be good or not. Uh, you know, Call of Duty 4 Remastered, even who knows? Battlefield One. There's a EA Play is going on like the week before. Uh, which I would have just gone out, not not the week before, it's like a few days before E3, I believe. So I would have just gone out there, you know, and, and done both in one trip. Uh, and Battlefield, they announced this on Twitter the other day, that Battlefield 1, they're actually going to have a stream of multiplayer uh, at EA Play, and there's going to be a bunch of EA, other EA games out there. So it, there was just so much that I, that I could have done and, you know, possibly recorded stuff for you guys. Uh, my Xbox contact was going to get me behind the scenes and playing all the games and recording opportunities and stuff like that. So it sucks for, you know, for me from like a nerd standpoint, it would have been cool. And also for you guys, because I would have been able to like bring back some cool content for you guys. But um, not only that, but like VR is going to be big at E3, I have a feeling this year. Like the, with the Vive just coming out and uh, the Vive getting really good reviews. And I have one myself and it's fucking amazing. It's so much fun. I'm meaning on getting some content out for you guys of that but uh i have a feeling sony and xbox are real close to unveiling a lot more about what they're going to have in store as far as virtual reality maybe you know even price points and games and stuff like that and i'm really excited to see what that stuff's going to be because it's going to be much more affordable and uh i don't know it'll just be really cool to see what they have in store so that's another thing that e3 that that's going to be kind of disappointing to miss um other than that um yeah, but the, here, the here's the good thing. Like, we'll get back, and I'll get back right during E3, basically, from the wedding. And much like I did with the announcement of Battlefield 1 and the announcement of Infinite Warfare, I made quite a bit of, like, topical commentaries, just kind of talking about Battlefield 1 announcement and what I thought, asking you guys questions. Uh, kind of my analysis, I guess you could say. Nothing too in-depth. You guys know that if you're fans of this channel. And, uh, you know, the same thing with Call of Duty and Battlefield. But the kind of the good, look at this dirt battle right here. That, like, first of all, that guy was a Pharah. He's shooting rockets at me. He should have killed me way before that. I was just spamming arrows, hoping to get lucky because I had no health. But anyways, I'll be home, and the E3 news will be coming out. And I can make at least some commentaries, maybe even grab some gameplay to show you guys if you didn't see it for whatever reason. And we can kind of talk about it and everything. So it'll be kind of good that I'll be home for E3 news, I suppose. Now, there obviously won't be any hands-on opportunities sitting uh, you know, at home while everything is in LA. But it is what it is, and it'll all be good. And uh, you know, I won't be too overwhelmed because I'm already going to be gone for the wedding, and then I would have been gone for LA. And... That's really hard on a YouTuber, uh, you know, like, is all the videos that you got to get ahead and everything. It's it's a lot, so. Anyways, I just kind of wanted to talk to you guys. Wanted to show you guys some Overwatch gameplay and talk to you guys about E3. And I think, I think I covered those goals. I think we have come to a point where we have achieved those goals. Anyways, I really like playing Hanzo. I like that I can play a little bit of a support character in the sense that his left shift ability is the little ping arrow. I don't know what you call it, where uh, everybody, you can see their red outline. I really like to be able to do that for the team because I know now, like I just, whenever we don't have a Hanzo or a Widowmaker using her special to illuminate the players, I get really annoyed. Like somebody has to be, do it, it's such a game changer to be able to see you know, like this fucking, this uh, junk rat right here. If I would have been able to see him coming through the wall right there and known he was coming at me, that would have been very good intel, you know? So if I'm not playing with somebody like that on my team providing that intel, it gets really frustrating. So I like to be able to provide the team with that. Also, the little scatter shot thing that Hanzo uses, um, his E ability is pretty sick. You see me use it there? Uh, didn't get the kill. I think I would have, but he got health at some point, I guess. I don't know. I got a kill the other day where I had damaged two people, and they were both attacking me at the same time, so I was in a tight spot, and I had them pretty low, so I switched to my E ability and shot the scatter shot at the floor where I knew it would bounce up at both of them, and I hit both of them and got both kills, and that was pretty satisfying. And if there's one word I can use to describe Overwatch gameplay, it would be satisfying. 
almost any hero that you play, pick up. Like I said, there's somebody for everybody's playstyle. It's super satisfying. I keep picking new heroes and trying them out. I, I recently started using... Oh, what's his fucking name? The big fat fuck that has the hook. You can see one on the screen right back there. I can't remember his name right now. Uh, but anyways, I started using him, and he's a lot of fun because you can hook people, bring him right to you, then use his little shotgun blast, and uh, it's good times. His his special, his ultimate, whatever you want to call it, is also really, really cool, and uh, he's just enjoyable. And that was one of the things that I wanted to point out as a major difference. A lot of people are just saying, you know, oh, it's just a TF2 reboot. Uh, also, look at my martyrdom getting a kill there, basically. Lol, Kappa. Uh, a lot of people that... That's one of the first things I think of whenever I hear the whole comparison to TF2 is TF2 didn't have ultimate abilities. There was, you know, there was alternate abilities and stuff like that, but there wasn't near as many characters. There's 21 characters in Overwatch, and everybody has an ultimate that, as you can see, Farah right there was just raining down rockets in a pretty spectacular fashion. There's just, everybody has an ultimate, and there's 21 characters, and there's so much to do and figure out and learn, and it's a lot of fun. So if you're a fan of Team Fortress 2, and for whatever reason you're like, no, nah, I don't think I want to play Overwatch because it's the same thing, don't think that. There, It's so much more than just a TF2 reboot. And it's a lot of fun, and I'm really enjoying it. Papa Hova going 21-6 and six there on the second gameplay. Like I said, 16-0, and 0, flawless on that first gameplay. Also, play of the games are a fucking magnificent addition to a shooter. Obviously, we've had kill cams for a long time, but play of the game is different. It's not just the final kill of the game or whatever. It's something that an algorithm that they're continually working on because, you know, it's not perfect right now. But it's something that an algorithm picks based on, like, damage done and support to the team and, and just, like, clutch moments and all that. There's so many factors that weigh into it. Look at that, 51% kill participation. Uh, but it's just a really cool thing to say to see. Even the losing team can get the play of the game, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Anyways, love the game. Let me know what you guys think of Overwatch. If you want to see more on this channel, let me know too. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you later.